السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر سیون آف مارکیٹنگ فار نان پرافٹ آرگنائزیشن ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو ایٹ ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان دی کمپوننٹ آف لرننگ آئی ایم پروسیڈنگ ٹو ورڈس از کاس مارکیٹنگ وی ہیو ٹو لرن کر وٹ کاس مارکیٹنگ از اینڈ وائی ایٹ ہیز بیکم سچ اے سگنیفیکنٹ ٹول ان دی ایریا آف نان پرافٹ مارکیٹنگ یو مائٹ ہیو نوٹس آن سرٹن ٹینجبل کنسیومر آئٹمس description of a social cause and the company of that matter that brand talking about making its contribution toward that particular social cause. You might also have heard about certain services with which are tagged with a social cause. So whenever you hear about these things or witness these kind of products, the first thing that flashes into your mind is that these companies or these products are doing a service to the society. They are partners with a certain cause for the which is good and therefore I should buy that product. If you do that, well, the purpose is served. I will explain it like the following. Let us take the example of a bank which is trying to promote its credit card. It is approaching its cardholders, offering them an opportunity to redeem their accumulated bonus points in favor of a social cause. How does it work? Let me explain that further. You are a credit card holder and you have a certain number of bonus points against all the purchases that you have made. In other words, the more you purchase, the more bonus points could you accumulate. And against those bonus points, you can get some attractive consumer items starting from ball points to mobile telephones to wristwatches to laptops and so on and so forth. There is an array of attractive consumer items toward which you are tempted. And you make more purchases, you accumulate more points, so that you can get one of those. On the other hand, there are certain causes which are also there uh, for your taking. Uh, the bank may have uh, got the joint hands with a um, entity that is uh, into eye care or uh, kidney care or cancer treatment as an NPO. What happens then? Well, the bank offers you to donate those accumulated bonus points in favor of a particular cause, for example, eye care. So you tell the bank that the points that you have, instead of getting a consumer item, you'll rather give those points to that NPO, which is working for that particular social cause you are interested in, for example, eye care. When you do that, you have made your contribution toward that cause. The bank has made its contribution toward that cause. Making, with these examples, one important thing that flashes into anybody's mind is, how does the whole thing work? Well, these examples explain in detail that uh, in order for this kind of a collaboration to work, it has to be made mutually beneficial. Until the time both the parties are convinced that it is going to be to their benefit, they will not get into an agreement and start working for the cause collectively. So therefore, uh, they have to build on each other's strengths and they have to create a situation whereby they can leverage a synergistic relationship. But by doing that, they create value for each other. Because if the relationship is lopsided, if the one company comes up with a lot of strengths and the other doesn't really have those, other is um, um, inflicted with all kinds of weaknesses, then the joint venture is not going to work. It is lopsided and it doesn't really make uh, it convincing for the stronger party to get into that agreement. So therefore, in order for these kinds of agreements to work toward a certain cause, um, it has to be made sure that uh, the, both the companies can create value for each other. And the way they create value for each other is through some commonality of interests. 
And that commonality of interest is the intersection of corporate interests and societal needs. It is very clear that the NPO is working for the society in order to bring about certain kind of social improvement. The corporate entity is busy selling its products, its brands, and it has to be seen how those brands can be promoted by also making contribution toward implementation of a good social program. So this makes it very clear that while this kind of an arrangement is beneficial for the corporate entity, it also is uh, advantageous for the NPO. So in other words, it creates value for both the entities. Corporate entities can uh, be acknowledged as socially responsible citizens, which is uh, a huge achievement in modern day's world. And NPO can make its programs very credible by joining hands with a known brand. And then people take that NPO and its programs more seriously. And uh, uh, that sets uh, the uh, road toward a successful implementation of the whole program. Let me also tell you that uh, this is uh, relatively a young concept. It uh, took its roots back in the 1980s, and uh, over the last couple of decades, it really has caught on. The amount of sales generated through these kind of cause-related programs run into billions of dollars in today's world. Time is not really far when cost marketing will uh, catch on in our society as well, and therefore we have to prepare ourselves by looking into what really uh, lays the foundation for this kind of a relationship. Because the one thing is clear, that NPOs want to be positioned into the minds of their target audience very effectively, while at the same time, corporations need to improve on their profitability. Because when they improve their profitability, they improve other financial numbers, and they, along with that, make it um, demonstrable to the society that uh, they have taken up a social responsibility and they have come up to their expectations. Uh, why they, do they really have to do that is a topic of uh, another component you know, which is going to be part of this lecture. But um, let me say for the time being that for these kinds of relationships to work effectively, there are four fundamental elements which we have to keep in mind. The one is that of partnership, the other is the purpose of those partnerships. The third one is the passion or the level of passion that is required to bring that purpose to life so that uh, you can have effective partnerships. And the fourth one is the kind of profits which accrue both sides as um, a result of uh, these relationships. Okay, back to these points, the one by one, partnerships. I think it goes without saying, after learning um, a little bit about uh, cause-related marketing, that partnerships have to be formed in a way that they create value for each other. Until the time the value is created for each other, the relationship is not going to take shape. What happens is, corporations throw their total marketing weight behind the NPO's program. The marketing weight is thrown by way of the product itself, and then through the trade members, starting with distributors, the wholesalers, retailers of all kinds, small retailers, the big retailers, supermarkets, and the like, and then down to the consumer level. Everybody is involved. It is uh, very interesting that um, it doesn't end here. It also involves companies' suppliers. Suppliers are the ones who supply all kinds of raw materials to the company for um, it to make that particular product. So in other words, it is the complete supply chain which is connected with that cause. Starting with the suppliers to the company, its product, and then all the way down to the consumer through the trade members. It is kind of outside in and then inside out uh, chain of suppliers and uh, uh, the buyers. So. In other words, anybody who's connected with the program by way of inbound activities or outbound activities becomes an inherent part of the effort toward that social program because everybody is contributing. As a result, sales of the company increase. It improves its bottom line and hence all the related financials. 
It is also very beneficial for the NPOs because it brings a lot of legitimacy to the NPO and the cause it is addressing. The credibility that the NPO gets because of this relationship uh, makes its programs more implementable and it is in a better position to achieve its mission. And we all remember from our past learning that uh, it is the achievement of the mission which is of uh, highest significance when we talk about uh, NPO marketing and not profitability. So this relationship paves the way for achieving uh, that mission. Another um, feature of uh, partnerships is that uh, the NPOs stand to gain the by way of acquiring corporate expertise. When they work with uh, these kinds of uh, the corporations having uh, very uh, prominent brands, uh, there's a lot of exposure which NPOs get and uh, which uh, uh, makes uh, the way for them to further their uh, marketing objectives because uh, there's a lot of marketing expertise which is imparted um, intentionally or unintentionally to NPO to the marketing team. This happens to be a very important uh, contributor toward uh, the total marketing program. And then as we know, it improves the revenue stream of the NPO for um, sustaining its uh, the program and uh, also developing a finance pool which uh, will always uh, help the NPO uh, in making its uh, the programs implementable. It is not just the traditional charity or philanthropy which is coming um, to the NPO, it also is the additional the revenue which comes to the NPO uh, as a result of this kind of relationship. All this boils down to one point, and that is that uh, the relationship has got to be very well thought through, uh, well planned, uh, well structured, and then well executed. It is going to be well executed only if it is very well planned. We know the importance of uh, planning uh, from one of the earlier lectures because um, putting together a program in a very professional and effective way is the only way to convince the stakeholders who are going to be convinced of the validity of uh, the social cause the NPO is working for. Until the time the internal uh, stakeholders are not convinced, there is no way that company can move forward with the right execution of the program. Here, the importance of this factor gets even more pronounced because you're working with a potential partner. You're working with somebody who already is very knowledgeable in terms of making marketing plans and business plans. So therefore, the marketing plan that you put together has got to be highly sellable and uh, should look like the one which is going to be implemented with total effectiveness of the social issue at hand. Only then, the corporate sector is going to be convinced on the validity of uh, that program. And the reason I talked about legitimacy and validity of uh, NPOs um, uh, getting out of this relationship basically owes to this fact. This further implies and strengthens the fact that uh, both the parties have to build on each other's strengths in order to make the relationship highly synergistic. Because a synergistic relationship will be effective and it will work both ways and they can draw on each other's strengths and make their respective programs implementable and uh, their objectives achievable. It takes uh, quite a bit of time before uh, these kind of relationships are uh, put into formal agreements because uh, you have to do a lot of assessment of each other and therefore um, both the parties have got to be very honest and transparent while they share information with each other They've got to make it easy for the other party to make a very rational, objective, and honest decision about whether to get into a relationship or not get into it. Um, it is very obvious and natural if uh, they uh, find a convergence of uh, a professional outlook, only then they will go ahead with uh, the relationship. It is not um, uh, important that uh, there has to be a very close fit between uh, what the uh, commercial entity is selling and uh, what the NPO is doing. What is more important is uh, uniformity of thought and uh, cohesiveness 
in terms of uh, the professional way of working uh, for a common cause. And therefore, uh, the assessment process uh, that has to be made uh, as less complex as possible. And uh, the complexity could be taken out of the equation only if uh, uh, transparently and honestly information is exchanged with the, between the two parties. Uh, the fact is that uh, making these arrangements uh, in, and giving them a formal shape takes longer than the duration of uh, uh, the campaign, uh, so to say. Uh, for example, a campaign which is uh, directed toward a uh, common cause it may last for anywhere from six months to a year or a year and a half, uh, but uh, it may take like a couple of years uh, before an agreement on uh, the relationship uh, takes place. It shouldn't really take that long, but I have just given you an example about the complexity which uh, you may run into before you formalize these kinds of agreements. The second element of um, cost marketing is um, purpose. What is the purpose uh, of uh, these partnerships and what is it that drives the purpose on both sides? Well, it is the commonality of interest. In other words, it is the interest of the commercial entity as well as the societal interest, which is being represented by the NPO. And you as uh, the marketing managers of the NPO are the custodian of that particular interest. And therefore, it is an intersection of corporate needs and societal needs. The job of uh, marketers on the NPO side is to find that intersection and to define that intersection of interest in such a uh, nice and effective way that um, the commercial entity ends up with buying that concept and uh, uh, prefer to get into a relationship with the NPO. The reason um, NPOs are striving hard to develop these relationships um, stem from the cause inflation. And I would define cause inflation in terms of uh, the too many causes uh, uh, floating all around the market uh, for which different companies and different groups are active and working on. So in order for you to differentiate from the rest of the crowd, you've got to uh, do something which uh, is different. Joining hands with a commercial entity not only gives credibility to your program, it also makes your program highly differentiated. And when your target audience knows what you and the commercial entity really stand for, it gives the whole program a lot more legitimacy than if the two entities were working in isolation, meaning trying to achieve their respective programs without the help of each other. So purpose basically stems from the intersection of interests of stakeholders, of uh, corporations, and of NPOs. Let me uh, try to explain this concept with the help of a graphical illustration, which is going to make it very clear how the whole thing works. As the presentation shows, we have nonprofits sitting right on top in blue, and then we have uh, the stakeholders on the left-hand side who are a part of the nonprofits because they're a combination of uh, the volunteers, uh, society activists, and uh, the board of directors, and any other individuals, groups, foundations, or any entity which is supportive of uh, the nonprofit cause. And then we have uh, the second partner in by way of corporations because shown in green. And uh, it is uh, very obvious from um, this illustration that uh, there is uh, a common area of uh, interest which is shown in red. And this is where the interests uh, intersect, meaning the interest of the nonprofit in terms of achieving its mission and interest of the corporation to promote its product by joining hands with the nonprofit and uh, the making a contribution toward the cause, appearing as uh, socially responsible citizens and then having that acknowledgement from the society to its benefit. So this is how this um, relationship uh, works. The important thing here is that uh, the intersection of interests is um, the basis of the value exchange, which I just touched upon earlier. Uh, the reason we call it value exchange is because both the parties are creating value for each other. 
they are creating value for business and uh, they are creating value for the cause. And that is why we call it a value exchange. This brings us to the next element of uh, cost marketing, and that is passion. Passion basically is a reflection of the will on part of both the parties to collaborate for working for a social cause. Until the time there is uh, a strong will on both sides, uh, there is no way that partnerships are going to work. And passion plays a great role toward that. It is not just the sponsors who are supposed to be the willful to make the programs successful. It is will on everybody's part. As a matter of fact, it just so happens that uh, in the U.S., there have been many instances where employees of, of a company uh, started working on a cause on their own without taking uh, the uh, corporation they were working for on board. And uh, it was only because of the interest on part of the employees that the corporations uh, also jumped on the same bandwagon and they thought they should be a party to it. They should be a partner in cause and they took over the programs. So in other words, the programs were initiated by the employees and then taken over by the corporations. So in other words, the willingness to work for a cause has to emanate uh, not from just the one quarter, rather it has to um, originate from all the quarters involved, employees, stakeholders, um, trade members, and uh, all those people who are connected with um, either the NPO or uh, the commercial entity. It is the collective uh, willingness of all those who are connected with the cause that make the relationship work. The fact of the matter is that uh, the working for the community has become uh, so much important and has taken on an added significance that uh, many teenagers in the Western societies are working for social causes. And another fact is that uh, their experience of uh, the working for the community, when uh, shown on the resumes, gets them a lot more attention in comparison with those who have not worked for the community. So uh, the working for the community is not only fruitful uh, for people individually, it is also uh, very advantageous when their uh, collective willingness is uh, put together uh, to work for a particular cause. The last element is that of uh, profit. I think it is obvious and goes without saying that uh, the purpose that we uh, take forward in order to make the programs uh, workable by forming uh, collaborative uh, partnerships and um, with uh, the kind of passion that uh, we have learned the people show or people should show to make these programs successful, bring everything to one point and that is of profitability. The relationship is profitable for both the parties. Um, one party, meaning commercial entity, stands to gain in terms of its commercial objectives. It uh, furthers their uh, marketing objectives in particular by way of brand development, or the corporate development, um, relationship management, advertising, promotions, and uh, public relations, um, which is, uh, at the end of the day, uh, benefit the corporation as a whole. And it is uh, also very profitable for uh, the NPO because it goes um, far beyond the uh, financial contributions. It basically is achievement of the mission. And uh, in order to understand what are the uh, profitable points on both sides, let me take you to yet another graphical presentation which is going to make it very clear what is good for FPOs, meaning for-profit organizations, and what is good for NPOs when they get together for a cause-related marketing um, initiative. This uh, presentation basically is an extension of um, the one that we saw a little while ago, and it basically expands the concept of value exchange. As you can see from here, we have uh, NPOs on the left-hand side right here and FPOs on the right-hand side. Now, concentrate on the left-hand side and just see what are the uh, profitable points for NPOs. First of all, it is the legitimacy with which this kind of relationship brings to NPOs. Uh, their programs become much more credible once they are supported by a corporate entity because uh, the people take them more seriously and they are bound to think of one fact that a corporation 
of this kind or a brand of that kind could will not get into partnership with a program if it was only a fly-by-night kind of a thing. It has to be uh, serious and very sincere. They really want to work for the society and do something for its improvement, and that is why they have joined hands. So it is the legitimacy factor which goes far beyond the financial contribution with which comes the way of NPOs, no question about that. The second profitable point is the, the value beyond money, and this is what I just talked about, that it is not just the financial contribution toward the financial pool with which the company has to itself, it is uh, the value with which uh, the company generates uh, in terms of um, achievement of the mission. And then a very important point, uh, the NPO has motivated employees. Naturally, when they realize that they have the support of uh, an important commercial entity, they work in a much more motivated environment because uh, they know they are being backed by uh, somebody with uh, meaningful of the pool of resources. Then it brings um, uh, brand loyalty to the program of uh, the NPO. Uh, the NPO can uh, strengthen the uh, concept they're working for. And uh, if they keep on working in uh, creative ways, they can they make a brand out of the initiative that they have taken toward that particular cause they are working for. And then another important point, they get corporate orientation. I think I did touch on this earlier. By working with a corporate entity, they get exposed to the culture of um, the a commercial uh, the setup, which is very highly organized. It is here that uh, some detractors uh, talk in opposition of this particular uh, the point, because they think this brings in commercialism among uh, the NPOs. But the fact remains, if NPOs stay true to their purpose and uh, the work on achievement of their mission, orientation acquired from a commercial partner is more helpful than harmful. And then all these points uh, translate into one thing, and that is achievement of mission. Let us now take a look at the other side, which is for-profit organizations. And uh, as is clear from the top, they have a great opportunity of uh, having their social work or contribution toward a social cause acknowledged by society at large or by their target audience in particular. But when they know that this company is contributing toward the social cause, they have more, much more strengthened preference for the brand of the company. And therefore, the corporate entity can enhance its reputation. And once you know, they have enhanced reputation, of course, it is a question of reputation management which they can carry out by getting into creative programs of similar nature and stay in the eyes of the public and the target audience in particular. And then they also, on the commercial side, have the motivated employees. The motivated employees are a great asset for any company. May that be a commercial entity or a non-profit organization. They produce the better results and uh, they make uh, the programs of the company implementable and uh, even when they are contributing toward a social cause, their contribution uh, which comes forward by way of the passion uh, I talked about earlier it means a lot. A lot for uh, the company they are working for and a lot for the social program they are contributing towards. And then, of course, you know, they have improved you know, the bottom line. Uh, their profitability increases because naturally it uh, pushes sales. And uh, when it pushes sales, it uh, gives the company a better uh, bottom line and better uh, related uh, the financial ratios and so on and so forth. Important point here is the point of convergence where uh, the profitability of the two sides meet and that is the value exchange. What it really means is that this kind of a cost-related marketing initiative creates shareholder and social value. It creates value for the shareholders on the commercial side and it creates value on the social side. It helps NPOs achieve their mission and it adds value to their 
programs. It also does a couple of more things, but I'm going to talk about those because the ones I am talking about uh, wrapping up this concept into giving you a structured definition for cost-related marketing. We are now getting into the next component, which is uh, definition of cost marketing. As a matter of fact, our learning that we have developed you know, through the lecture so far has brought us into this component, which is now going to build up on the elements of uh, a structured definition of cost marketing. We have seen with the help of uh, the graphical presentation of a little while ago that uh, cost marketing is beneficial for uh, the two partners in cause, with the meaning the corporate entity as well as the NPO. And uh, cost marketing is something which goes far beyond uh, financial contributions. It is not just charity or philanthropy. Uh, it is something which is very well structured and it goes a long way a uh, long way toward uh, achieving the mission of the NPO and also strengthening the brand of the commercial entity. The main feature of um, this relationship is that uh, the commercial organization throws its marketing weight behind the social cause. And marketing weight, as I explained earlier, is thrown for the, by way of um, the uh, distribution network of the company as well as uh, the integrated uh, marketing communication campaigns initiated by the corporate partner. It is very beneficial for the NPOs because they can have an outreach with which in the absence of this kind of a relationship is not really possible. Just think of the distribution setup of the corporate entity and uh, look at the uh, distribution of the product, uh, the meaning uh, distributors, the wholesalers, um, and all kinds of retailers and then consumers spread all over the marketplace, um, getting exposure to the social cause and um, getting motivation uh, uh, to actuate into um, preferring the product which is working for the social cause are uh, some of the things which are not really possible if the NPO um, was to work on its own, meaning in the absence of this uh, relationship. So the collective um, strength of um, the, the working and contribution by the members of the trade or the distribution channels is awesome when it comes to NPO. There is just no way that the NPO could have done that without this kind of a relationship. Now, this is not to say that uh, the NPO is an underdog and um, the commercial entity is the overdog. The, the fact remains that uh, the NPO also has a lot to uh, show and a lot to contribute to the by way of uh, its assets of different kinds, um, uh, volunteers who are working for the organization, um, stakeholders uh, in the form of board of directors, its uh, employees, and then uh, the all uh, kinds of uh, social activists the here and there the who can make their contribution to the make uh, the uh, NPO a very a noticeable and uh, viable kind of an organization with which um, qualifies uh, to become the partner of um, the commercial entity in question or in focus. Generally, it is the feeling on part of the nonprofits that uh, they are at a disadvantageous uh, situation, whereas the commercial entity has an upper hand. That is not so. Because even if the NPO happens to be a smaller organization, they have to contribute a lot by way of what I just talked about. NPOs, however, stand to gain also through the multiple exposure uh, to the program by way of the communication campaigns uh, kicked off by the commercial entity. Just think of the, the marketing collaterals uh, which carry the description of the social uh, problem, the social cause, and the contribution which is envisaged to be made by all the connected constituents of uh, the whole program. Uh, the meaning all the people connected with the commercial entity as well as the NPO. And uh, it would not have been possible if the NPO wants to work on its own because the uh, communication campaign that it would have cost so much that uh, the NPO would be uh, facing a hard time meeting those uh, 
promotional budgets. And therefore, uh, this uh, partnership is uh, very beneficial uh, in terms of uh, providing the kind of uh, communication support which could be offered only by a commercial brand or a commercial entity. The strength of uh, different um, uh, tools of communication in the bag, in the mixed bag of uh, integrated communications the marketing people on the commercial side uh, have is known to all of us. And uh, that we uh, can appreciate the multiplier effect of different tools when they are put together to send the message across. There is yet another benefit that NPLs derive out of cost marketing or cost related marketing. And that is they're not really limited to one particular relationship with one particular corporate entity. They can always get into similar relationships with uh, other players within the corporate sector. All they need is uh, credibility in the marketplace. And if they have worked very sincerely, if they have achieved their mission or they are very close to achieving the mission, then they can be considered by other players very seriously because of the legitimacy they have acquired by getting into one program with one player. This is a huge benefit which uh, can make uh, this kind of an exercise uh, almost perpetual if uh, the NPO wants to be very active and wants to be kind of proactive. I think I did point out earlier uh, that uh, it basically uh, owes to the cost inflation that uh, the NPOs could have to differentiate themselves uh, from uh, uh, with many others could be working in the same area um, and then joining hands with uh, commercial entities. And commercial entities have to consider NPOs could be because they want to prove their um, corporate citizenship. And uh, this therefore works with both ways. So could we have seen that uh, cost marketing has uh, become a very important tool of marketing at the disposal of uh, commercial marketers as well as uh, social marketers. In other words, uh, the marketers working on the NPO side. It uh, really has uh, become a new arm of marketing in the words of a few experts. They say, in addition to advertising, promotions, and public relations, cost marketing is a tool which uh, many companies should employ in order to prove their uh, corporate citizenship and uh, for NPOs to achieve their mission. Uh, with this, we are now all set to take a look at uh, the definition of um, cost marketing or cost uh, related marketing. But again, before I talk about the structured definition as put forward by an expert, let me show you um, a, a summary of uh, what I have talked about in a graphical form, which will automatically take us to that uh, definition for uh, a greater sense of clarity. If you take a good look at uh, this presentation, you will see that uh, this basically talks about the complementarity of uh, the two sides, meaning the commercial side and uh, the cause side uh, represented by NPOs. And therefore, this also becomes kind of an extension of uh, the presentation that uh, we had just a little while ago. Take a look on the left side and we have commercial marketing sitting here. Commercial marketing creates a lot of value for the corporation in terms of improved sales and a healthier bottom line and all those benefits that I talked about in terms of the value exchange. If you take a look at the cause side represented by NPOs, here we have the particular cause and we are convinced that this cause uh, because of the contribution by the corporate side and the primary working of the NPO uh, creates some social value by addressing societal value-based needs. The needs that are addressed by NPOs are societal-based. We know that. And NPOs work for those needs. And we also know there is an intersection of interest which was the subject of the first graphical presentation I showed you. And it is that 
intersection of interest with which actuates the two sides to join hands and then, then work together collaboratively for a common cause and for a common end. And therefore, if you take a close look at these two sides, one is value for the corporation, other is addressing of societal value-based needs. This integrates the value, which is right here on the commercial side, and values, which is right there on the cost side. Now, try to understand the difference between the value and values. Value is the one that is created by the commercial marketing side for its product, its brand, and its own existence by way of improved earnings. That's the value. And it does come that way. There is no denying that. But values, values are the ones that are addressed collectively. And in order to address those values, the two sides have joined hands. And by joining hands, working for those values, they have created a social value. So this is the difference between value and values. So in other words, by addressing those social values, both the sides reflect certain values in which they believe in. Because they believe in the welfare of society, they are working on one particular cause. They are reflecting those values for which they are working. And while working for those values, they are creating value. They're creating value for the corporation and they're creating value for the NPO as well. It is because of that that you see this shareholder and social value at the bottom, purple circle. And this is the same thing that you saw in the earlier presentation. However, there is one additional factor here, and that is the connection of all the constituents along the supply chain. On the left-hand side, you can see employees, shareholders, traders, customers all making their contribution toward the cause, meaning toward creating that shareholder value and social value. At the same time, you see those constituents on the right-hand side by way of society influentials, employees and volunteers, and community activists. And then, of course, you know, we have the combined assets from both sides that come into play and uh, with all these features becoming inherent to the program, they all create shareholder and social value. This presentation that you've just seen makes four very significant conclusions. Number one is that cost marketing creates shareholder and social value. Cost marketing creates some mutually beneficial collaborative relationships between corporate entities and NPOs. Cause marketing connects and engages different constituents on both sides, meaning on the commercial side, as well as on the NPO side. We have seen the kind of contribution they make. And number four, cause marketing communicates values of corporate citizenship. The reason I talk about this point number four is because NPOs are known for their existence, meaning the reason for being of an NPO is known that it works for a good cause and it exists for a good cause, but it is the corporate sector that has to prove its demonstrable ability to word working for a cause which is good for the society at large. And with this, I now show you the structured definition of cause marketing. Cost marketing is a mutually beneficial collaboration that aligns the power of a company's brand, marketing, and people to a charitable causes brand and assets to create shareholder and social value, connect with constituents, and publicly communicate values. I think this definition should now be very clear in the minds of all of us and we know what cost marketing is and why it has become such an important tool of marketing. Thank you.